Tokyo, capital of Japan, a metropolis of more than 12 million people. It's one of the most technologically advanced places in the world. In Japan, tradition and progress struggle to keep in step. Japan is a land rich in customs and rituals, a place where ancient beliefs still hold sway. And it's when these clash with a relentless pursuit of the future that the scene is set for a successful horror movie. On the big screen, people's anxieties become larger than life. Horror films have a continuing fascination in part because these directors have been able to bring in topical um, issues. Things we're all concerned about, things we're all thinking about. Certain of the Japanese horror films seem a little bit more believable because they start by dealing with a very realistic context, but then gradually something that's creepy and supernatural starts to work its way in. The godfather of all Japanese horror films, and voted by fans worldwide the most frightening movie of all time, is Ring. The story of Ring revolves around Reiko Asakawa, a journalist who watches the mysterious contents of a videotape and is struck with its deadly curse. Anyone who watches this tape has only seven days to lift the curse or face the wrath of Ring's infamous female villain, Sadako. This unforgettable scene was so frightening that many Japanese audiences were too scared to turn on their TV sets for days afterwards. But it was the character of Sadako that had the most impact on Japanese audiences and turned Ring into a classic. Hideo Nakata, director of Ring, believes that Sadako delivers a uniquely Japanese interpretation of the horror villain. Western horror is focused on Christian notions of good versus evil, meaning the evil spirit tries to destroy humans and challenge God, such as in the movies Exorcist and Omen. In contrast, Japanese movies are more likely to be based on the spirits of the dead coming back to haunt the living. The Japanese believe that everyone possesses a reikon, or soul. It is said that when someone dies, the soul joins his ancestors to watch over the living. Then there are those who die tragically, sometimes without a proper burial. These souls become yurei, tormented ghosts who remain among the living to seek revenge. Many stories of the yurei have survived, largely due to the popularity of kabuki theatre, a colourful art form that dates back to the early 17th century. I think kabuki plays have heavily influenced Japanese horror movies. The kabuki plot that revolves around a woman tragically killed, whose cursed soul causes strange occurrences, is now common in movies, television and other art performances. The origin of this plotline comes from a famous kabuki play called The Ghost Story of Yotsuya. It tells the tale of Oiwa, a woman brutally murdered. She returns as a vengeful ghost to bring death to those who wronged her. Since Oiwa is Japan's bogeyman, the makers of Ring based much of Sadako's character on the country's most famous ghost and a classic figure in Asian horror the avenging female. This theme of the vengeful 
uh, female. Uh, the girl or teenager or woman who is wronged, uh, usually killed, and now comes crawling back, uh, popularized in part by the film Ringu. It's interesting that in these films, um, this concern works in tandem with some conflict over the power uh, of women. These are often female ghosts that are coming back. Asian horror films often carry hidden messages, warnings that serve to dramatize the deepest, darkest fears about the world we live in. The real question is what these fears tell us about ourselves. The Japanese believe that gateways exist between our world and the spirit world. Ancient superstitions and traditions warn us to keep the gates closed. They believe that the forces of evil and even death can come to those who break this taboo. In the seminal Japanese horror film Ring, the thin boundaries between this world and the afterlife are crossed by the film's protagonists when they watch a cursed videotape. This unleashes Sadako, the vengeful ghost, through a contemporary interpretation of a spirit gateway, the TV set. <laughs> At that time, VCRs and TV monitors could be found in every room, not just in every household. The idea of an everyday appliance becoming a portal to hell was what appealed to people. <laughs> I think that as our lives become more and more dominated by technology, um, so do our fears as well as our hopes and ambitions. As we become more and more addicted to our television set or our plasma or LCD screen, and the idea that that can become a demonic form and it can actually become your enemy is a fairly frightening concept. The idea of a ghost crawling out of a TV set may seem novel, but it actually draws its roots from an older, more sinister gateway through which the dead have traditionally emerged. The dark confines of a well have a deep significance in Japanese culture. A famous folktale from feudal Japan tells the tragic story of a servant girl who was once humiliated by her master. She chose to end her life in the depths of a well. In Ring, Sadako reveals her connection to the well through Asakawa. Murdered by her father, Sadako becomes an angry and restless spirit. She rises from her watery grave to seek revenge. There is a particular eeriness that surrounds a well. Sometimes the dripping water resembles blood. This emphasizes the connection between water and ghosts. So there's a belief that a ghost with a grudge will come out from this gateway to seek revenge. 